glad you're here. We're going to make sugar waffles today, which are one of my favorite, absolute favorite things to make. I have right here in this bowl, I have three large eggs that are room temperature. Can you all hear me okay? Three large eggs that are room temperature. And I have three-fourths of a cup of warm milk, okay? I'm using uh, one and a half teaspoons of rapid rise yeast for this, okay? If you do not have rapid rise, re <laughs> I'm saying that real fast. If you don't have rapid rise yeast, you can use just regular active, dry active yeast that's not uh, quick acting. And all you do, you get your dry ingredients and you mix your yeast with your flour and your salt, okay? I'll put the recipe on here after this is done. So the flour and the salt and the yeast are in this bag, okay? Milk, eggs. I'm gonna whisk this together, and then I have some melted butter. It, can everybody hear me okay now? Y'all hear me okay? Doing great. Awesome, I'm so sorry about that, I have no clue. The Wi-Fi decided to freak out on us, and I'm going to move this over here so I can see this a little better. All right, the eggs and milk are together. Now I have some butter over here that I have, and Hudson, you can do a split screen if you want to, whatever you think looks good, okay? I have some melted butter here, and this is a stick and a half. Yes, I know, that is a lot of butter. I did not say these were healthy, I just said they were wonderful. So, I'm gonna whisk this butter in like this. Can y'all see that okay? All right. Yeah, he can pan out with that camera though. Just pan out if it's too close. All right, you see how that's really becoming smooth right there? That butter and the eggs and the milk is kind of, it's called an emulsion. It's making like a, a salad dressing. You get a an oil and a water together and you whisk it and then it makes it come together into one, one nice smooth mixture. So that's my butter in there. I'm gonna put this over here. Okay, I'll make sure all that butter is in there. Y'all, these are so easy, okay? It's just a little bit of prep work, but once you do these few ingredients, I'm gonna mix in, this is all-purpose flour, this is um, rapid rise yeast, and some salt, okay? I'm going to mix all that in there, and I probably should have taken the whisk out because I need actually a spatula to do this, so I'm gonna make a really big mess. I got one. All right, let me get this whisk out of here. Don't you love that whisk though? Is that not cool? Got that Williams Sonoma. It has a little rubber spatula on the actual whisk. I think that is so cool. So you can actually scrape the bowl. So with this spatula, all I'm gonna do, again, these are so easy. They come together so quickly. The most difficult part for me in this is waiting. So uh, once you mix this together, you're gonna have to cover this with a tea towel cover it with a uh, foil plastic wrap anything that will keep it from drying out okay once this totally comes together I'm gonna scrape the sides of this you see how that's really come together it's very very sticky but as it sits there you're gonna let it sit for an hour covered in a warm place okay if you do uh, I've done this before when I was first making this and I put it in the bread proof setting in the oven which was not good because even though that's only 100 degrees 100 degrees makes butter turn liquid okay <clears throat> so if you have this butter in here which you do have a lot of it if you get it above too high of a temperature as it sits the butter is going to start leaching out does that make sense it's going to start separating from this and it's going to make it really greasy but if you keep this uh, you know, 75-ish degrees, 75, 80 degrees, you're totally fine. Okay, so look, this has totally come together. It's really smooth. I'm going to scrape down the sides of the bowl, okay? That's it. Scrape this on here. Then I'm going to cover this. I'm going to set this in a warm place for, again, an hour. I do an hour. Well, because I care, I've already made another one for you okay see how much that's risen it's not sticky anymore you can actually touch it it won't stick to your hands this is called pearl sugar it looks like almost like rock salt epsom salt 
Um, I got this online. I've never seen this in stores. I bet you could probably get this at Whole Foods. Um, this is the bag. They do not have this on Amazon, this particular brand anymore, but that's what it is. Belgian Pearl Sugar is what it's called, okay? And I honestly can't remember what, remember what I got this big bag for, but it, it, it was not bad at all, okay? So, I've got a cup and a half of this sugar, okay? And this is my pretty dough that's, oh, look at that. You see it's really risen. I'm going to deflate it. I'm going to pour a cup and a half of that sugar in there, okay? And then I'm just going to start, you can be pretty rough with it. It's already risen like it's supposed to, so you can't really do any damage at this point. Um, it's gotten to relax sitting there too for a while. The gluten and the flour starts to relax. And the reason why I do the sugar now instead of earlier is because if you mix this in and all this stuff is wet, this stuff will start to dissolve. And it kind of defeats the point of these little sugar pockets. So... Look at that, that looks that looks really about perfect. Do I have any questions? I'm about to start cooking these. Y'all, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties. I don't know what happened. They all know what the spatula is. <laughs> well, my spatula says? Um, I got this at Sur La Tabla and it was on clearance because it was, when was that, babe? Was it, was it in it's January? Halloween. It was after Halloween. Yeah. It was probably in January. Mm -hmm. And that's a Halloween spatula says bone appetit. Get it? Because, yeah, bone appetit. Okay. So, I have a little trusty ice, ice cream scoop. I bet this thing is 20 years old. I don't know. It is a one and five eighths of an ounce scoop, okay? You can do bigger. I wouldn't do any smaller than this, and I think this is about a, it says on here right here, a 20, so I don't really, I'm not very familiar with scoopers. I just know I have this one, and it works great. So, I'm going to scoop out a good size portion like that, okay? And yeah, I'm gonna get all over my hands, okay? Overhead shot, that waffle iron is definitely ready. I have this on the lowest setting, okay? This is this is really hot. I do not grease this at all because there's so much butter in here. So what I'm gonna do, put one right there. Right there. And again, if, if you find that you really love these, which I'm pretty sure you will, you can actually double the recipe and since you're going through the trouble of making a mess, it's not any more work really to, to double it. So what we do, I make a big batch of these, and then once they're cooked, I don't freeze the dough, I actually freeze the waffles, the cooked waffles. Put that down. These will take, gosh, maybe two minutes, two and a half minutes, just depending on how hot your iron is. But we will cook all of these, let them cool completely, and then I'll put them in a Ziploc freezer bag, and freeze them, and then whenever we want them, we um, we just put them in a toaster. Actually, I microwave them for about 20, 30 seconds to get them you know, a little warm, and then I finish them in the actual toaster oven and get them really crispy, so quite nice. <clears throat> Can y'all still hear me okay? I tested out my little lob mic five minutes before we went live, and, and I did a recording, and it sounded great, so I am so sorry. Ruth Catlin wants to make sure you're gonna post the ingredients Afterwards. Ruth, I absolutely will. I'm sorry, I'm clean. I'm got this stuff all over me. I will post the ingredients. Uh, again, the only kind of exotic ingredient that you can't <laughs> kind of test it by. Can you find it at Walmart? Uh, I have not seen sugar pearl sugar at Walmart yet. All right. If you don't want to do pearl sugar, which I really, really recommend pearl sugar. If you don't want to do pearl sugar, you can also get sugar cubes. Okay. Get a sharp knife and just kind of put it over the sugar cube and hit it. It will obviously break that sugar sugar cube apart. Uh, you won't get as big a chunks as, as the oh my word, those are beautiful. You won't get as big of a chunks as you will with the pearl sugar, but that that will still work if you want to get out. Pearl sugar is actually made from the sugar of beets. I just found this out, which is really interesting. It doesn't taste like beets. It just tastes it tastes like sugar, and it's it's amazing. So I have my tongs here because I've tried to take these out before with my hands, which was not. Not smart because when you have molten sugar, sugar that liquefies, you don't want to touch that with your fingers because uh, it's like napalm. It just sticks to your hands. Ah, just like that. Look at that. Aren't those pretty? Can you see those, Hudson? Uh, but as these sit here, they're going to get really crispy on the outside. And then the inside is going to be very 
soft, very fluffy. And I love these because, as you know, most most waffles are made, they're, they're like a quick bread. They, they use a leavener. They use a baking soda, baking powder to make them rise, to make them puff up. Well, this recipe obviously doesn't have that. You use the yeast. So I like it because it's kind of a combination of a donut and a waffle and the, the sugar in it. You don't have to put any syrup or anything on it. it it's just amazing, just like it is. In fact, uh, little boys, y'all had that last night, didn't you? I had some sugar waffles in the freezer and they wanted one. I said, yeah, let me go. Let me go just warm a couple up. And within five minutes, they had just like it was a fresh, a fresh sugar waffle. But yeah, I, I, I thaw it out a little bit in the microwave at first, and then I um, I finish in the toaster to get the outside a little more brown and crispy, because if you do the microwave, it can get kind of soft and rubbery if you do too long in the microwave. So I do it in the microwave just long enough to thaw it out, really. Um, so I'm going to do just a few more. You see how quickly they go? I mean, it's really not even two minutes, and they are they are set. Bonnie wants to know if you don't have a waffle maker, can you make it a pancake? Uh, on grill? Yeah, yeah, it, it, it won't be the same. Uh, it's just like the difference in having a pancake or waffle. You know, the pancake are more soft on the outside. I guess if you fry it in butter, pancakes and butter, they have more of a, you know, a crust in there like at a Cracker Barrel. Um, but most waffles that I've eaten, that, that I really enjoy, are more crispy on the outside, have more of a firm exterior. So you won't really get that same uh, texture, which I think is so great because the contrast of the texture of the soft inside and then the crispy outside is just is amazing. But if you don't have a waffle iron, you can totally do these just on a griddle in a pan. It, they'll still taste great. You just won't, you might not get the exact same experience as far as the textures, but the flavors will be, will be awesome. Carl Piper wants to know if you greased or oil. Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Um, I don't know. You know, Chuck gave me a recipe. I'm going to put in a new cookbook, actually. Oh, yeah. Those little graham cracker things. Um, no, Chuck, I do not grease at all because this has so much butter in it. It is not necessary. I think if you greased the waffle iron or even if you do it in a skillet, again, I haven't done it in a skillet. You might need to put a little pan, just a touch. Um, I'm afraid if you grease the waffle iron, it would make it too greasy. It would make it too heavy. So... Um, I think these are really about done. Does, does some little boy want to come and try this? Does someone want to come and try it? Come here, buddy. Come here, Cardi. Okay. Ooh, come here. Okay. Can I see that? I, I'm going to break that open. Have you got a good shot of that? Look at how you break that open. See how soft that is? It's just really, really soft. Cardi, you want to try a bite of that? Come here, buddy. It might be too hot. Well, here. Let me blend it. Okay. And even if it's terrible, say, oh my word, that's amazing. That's good, isn't it? Yeah? Thank you. All right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Oh, so good. Oh. Y'all, please be careful. I burned my hands twice already. <laughs> oh my God, it's so hot. Any questions about these or anything that I fixed or about... I don't know, Bill Gaither's hair or... They want to know what food is next. Oh, sorry. That's really good. What, buddy? Uh, also, he has steak. Steak? Cardin says steak. Who's buying the steak? Are you buying the steak? Well, I said one of the people said steak. <laughs> oh, oh, someone said steak on there. All right. Well, okay, uh, what did else? What did someone just say? What else? What's your favorite food? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Um. Okay, last night... I did something from my last cookbook, the honey balsamic chicken, and it's quite healthy because you grill it. Uh, you can grill it outdoors, or you can do it in a skillet. If you do it indoors, you have to wipe out the skillet after every cooking because the sugar, or the brown sugar and the honey in it burns. So if you don't get that out there, it'll all your chicken will be burned tasting up, up from the next batch. But that's one of my favorites is what we had last night, and it's so easy. You just pour everything in a baggie. Let the chicken sit there for a while and then grill it and then pour some reserved marinade that you set aside before you you know, put the chicken in there. And you pour that over the top and it soaks into it while it rests. It, it's, it's fantastic. I've done pizza on here. I love doing homemade pizzas. We did not do that this past Sunday because we've done it, I think, for a month, every um, Sunday for a month. 
what what did we do for dinner last Sunday, guys? I didn't do panko pizza. Oh yeah, I did panko chicken, which is funny. Yeah, and we did uh, homemade mac and cheese. Uh, Andrea, Andrea's mother, we call her Emmy. Emmy's mac and cheese. I made that Sunday night, and that recipe will be in the cookbook as well. So for, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, Brenda Gerard uh, watched your dinner conversation with Dad. Oh uh, yeah, time. yeah. Enjoyed did you enjoy all. that? Yeah, that if, if y'all have not seen that, um, my father-in-law did, and I did, an episode of Dinner, Dinner Conversations with Mark Lowry and Andrew Greer, and uh, it, it was really great. It was on suicide, and I think it's something that people people need to talk about. It's it's a very, very important, serious um, topic right now that uh, that doesn't need to be swept under the rug. So I had the privilege of singing a couple songs. I did... Um, yeah, I did. I'll pray for you, and I did. Uh, I will go on. I will go on. Thank you. I can't think. I did both of those, just just with a piano. Andres Ortega is watching from Argentina. Argentina. Hey, don't cry for me. Does this recipe Sorry. come with a gym membership? <laughs> hey, just just make it eat it on Sundays. Just 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 one day a week. Just one day. Our dear friend Marilyn <laughs> would like to know where you got the pearl sugar. Amazon. Everything's from Amazon now. You know. And that's literally <clears throat> called. Belgian it's called pearl yeah Bel sugar. Belgian pearl sugar, and uh, it it looks like rock salt. It, it's amazing. Hudson, I mean, yeah, your name's Hudson. You I mean you see all it, it just it falls out, and that's that's okay. That's okay. It's it's gonna fall out because you use a lot in here. But you see how quickly these these cook. I mean, that's just amazing. But again, it has a yeasty flavor like a yeast donut, which is if you don't know, one of my favorite things on the planet a fresh donut, and. Uh, Gosh, I got to my fingernail. That was burning through my nail. Um, you know, I've, I've tried to do donuts many times, and they turn out pretty well, but there's so much work. There's so much work, and they're so messy. And I told Andrea, I said, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to do a donut recipe because there's a Krispy Kreme down the road, and by the time I go through the trouble of making these, I could have run to Krispy Kreme and done it, got them for cheaper than what I could make made at home probably. Well, not cheaper, but... By the time, all my time and effort and energy, I'd rather just go get them. <laughs> Katrina Hansen wants to know what album I'll pray for you is on. It's on Pure and Simple. Pure and Simple. If you don't have that album, it is a, it is a great album. It's, it's very uh, it's very pared down instrumentally. There's not any big instrumentation. It's basically kind of like an unplugged sound. You know, just just acoustical instruments. Uh, it's it, it's a really great album, and it's got some great songs, including I'll Pray for You. Great. Donna Kelly says, since you've traveled so much since joining the GBB, how are you, Andrea, and the boys adjusting to being together 24-7? <laughs> well, that, that's a good question. I think for us, we are fortunate because we homeschool. Uh, Andrea does, I say, you know, 90% easily of the homeschool, but, but I do chip in. Grammar is kind of my specialty. But um, we're, we're used to being together a lot. So for us, it's really not much of a change. You know, the boys, um, I hate for the boys because they haven't been able to see their friends at co-op and at church. So that's probably been the toughest thing for them. But, you know, in all honesty, even though I'm not working, yeah, it's, it's stressful at times when I think about, you know, I have no income coming in. Um, but at the same time, you know, we're just, we're trusting. And we, we know that we are going to be just fine. And uh, I'm I'm enjoying time at home. I'm enjoying getting to to do these things with y'all and um, you know correspond back and forth as we do this. So uh, please feel free. Also, if, if you could do me a favor, everyone that's watching, if you could subscribe to um, to this channel, to my West Hampton channel. Anytime I go live, anytime I schedule something live, it will notify you so that you know. Okay, yeah, West West is going live. You know tomorrow. And then I believe, I think it's 30 minutes before, you'll get another another notification. So I, I will never email you, try to you know sell you anything. I just, I want to uh, be able to connect like this. So like it, subscribe, share, all that stuff that they, all the, all the kids say. Well, you can tell them what you've been working on. Yeah, I have a 40, I think 47 or 48 recipes done for the new cookbook. And I was wanting to do 50. I'll probably end up doing a little more than 50. But I've got the stories done for all those. Uh, most of those have pictures. I'm going to put some some, uh, some candid family photos in there, some vocal band photos in there, some stories. So uh, be looking for Wesabee's Volume 2 probably the end of the spring. 
for early summer. So we're excited to get that out. I have plenty of time to do it, so I might as well do it. Any other questions before we sign off? Thank you so much for joining. And again, I'm so sorry about the technical stuff. I have no clue what happened. No clue. Okay, I've got one more. I would say these, uh, let me do about 20 more seconds. So we're hearing stuff for next week. What, what, what did someone say for next week um, to make? Uh, I didn't see any suggestions. No one had suggestions. Okay, okay. Well, if you do have suggestions, just write those in, and we will um, we'll see what is the most popular, and then I will, I will try to do that for next week. So, y'all, please stay healthy. Please stay safe. We're still doing the social distancing like we, like we should. Uh, I had to go to the store the other day, so... I put my mask on and took my uh, Clorox wipes with me and my hand sanitizer and all that. And I tried to stay away from people as much as I could. So, wow, that's really hot. Um, well, I believe that's all she wrote. Um, thank you so much again for joining us. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the week. Y'all, please stay healthy. Please stay safe. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.